wir haben heute Leute hier, die tatsächlich damals in Woodstock nicht nur dabei waren, sondern auch auf der Bühne gestanden haben. Äh, wir haben nämlich äh, Leute von Can't Heat hier und äh, das eine ist Larry Taylor, der Bassist und Skip Taylor, der Manager, äh, der auch damals schon mit dabei war als Manager und das Ganze so ein bisschen ähm, mit kontrolliert hat und auch die Jungs dahin gebracht hat. I'm very proud to have you here tonight. It's, it's uh, really nice to talk to, with you about Woodstock and other things. And uh, just uh, what is the first thing, the first impression you, you've got in mind if you think about Woodstock, the first picture you have in mind? Well, for me, it's uh, the, f the first picture is uh, being in a helicopter coming over the last mountain and seeing 400,000 people gathered in front of a stage to see music, which I had never seen before or since. So it, it was a re really big audience. And did you, um, did you think that there will be so many people? Not originally when we booked it, but uh, when we found out how hard and difficult it was going to be to get there and that the New York Thruway was closed, and that the only way we could get there was hiring two single-engine planes to fly six of us in there. We knew it was a big crowd. Okay, I just translate a little bit. Um, uh, Sie sagen also, das Erste, was Sie gesehen haben oder das Erste, was er immer noch im Kopf hat, wenn er an Woodstock denkt, ist diese gigantische Menge, äh, die dort war. Und ich habe ihn auch einfach gefragt, ob Sie damit gerechnet haben, dass so viele Leute da sind. Und er hat gesagt, naja, Sie haben nicht so wirklich damit gerechnet, aber Sie sind dann schon im Vorfeld ein bisschen informiert worden und haben ja mitbekommen, wie schwierig es ist, dahin zu kommen. Und äh, da haben Sie schon gedacht, dass eine Menge Leute da sein müssen. Larry, you wanted to talk some. Playing for that many people for the first time was scary. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you were really nervous or just a little bit? A little bit. A, a little bit nervous. But enough that you could, it was something new, something different. For 400,000 people. The, the feeling was something different. The reason you were there was something different. The people, why the people were there was something different. But what was the difference? There were many festivals before Woodstock, but it never happened like that. What, what was the, the difference? People were there because they were rebelling against what the society was laying out at that particular time. That's what I think. Well, that, that was definitely part of it. And, uh, uh, it was just a separation of old and young, really a, a, a gap, mostly because of the Vietnam War. And uh, just the feeling that the, a lot of the older people in the, in the country felt we should be at war, and a lot of the younger ones didn't. And, right. And it uh, was that simple. And uh, a lot of the younger ones were taking a different direction for their life. And they, they no longer wanted to pursue just the dollar. They wanted to pursue good life and uh, social benefits for many people and get back to the earth and uh, peace and love and happiness yeah. <laughs> and all that yeah. and uh, what about you got some problems with your roadies they tried to drive to Woodstock but that was not so easy well they left the night before and in a truck a big rental Hertz truck and uh, with all our equipment because in those days uh, festivals or anybody no one supplied equipment to the bands you had to supply your own equipment so we left uh, our roadies left with a truck with all of our equipment from New York it took them should have been about a two and a half hour drive to uh, the Woodstock area to Bethel New York time, took them 12 backstage they got there through everything uh, at the same time as our helicopter flew flew in uh, not our helicopter flew us in the, they had Uh, army helicopters bringing people in to uh, play, but mainly they were bringing the people in to do medical work, uh, doctors and nurses, because all of a sudden you had the second largest city in New York, in the state of New York, and they were not prepared for uh, births and injuries and overdoses and all of the health and medical problems. So before we could ever fly in, Uh, all of the medical people had to be taken in by army helicopter first. And some bands uh, didn't arrive in Woodstock. 
um, I'm Butterfly, uh, didn't get any helicopter. Uh, was it for you to, to get the helicopter? I think it was a big organization to get every band in. So uh, well, You had to be someplace where the helicopter was working out of, and we flew into White Kill Airport, which is where the Army was staging the helicopters for medical. So we took two little planes, New Jersey, Linden, New Jersey, into White Kill airport this little airport in new york state and that happened to be the, the right airport because that's where the army helicopters were coming in or we probably wouldn't have gotten there either and we had to wait all day at that airport once we were there before it was our turn to go okay larry how was it for you as a, a musician uh, you you were there backstage and have your instrument and going to play uh, was there any structure uh, in backstage uh, any plans that really worked or was it everybody uh, as i remember i think we had a set we we wrote a set i, I, I think I, I, yeah. as i remember we wrote a set but you know like i said a little while ago you didn't know how what that feeling was going to be once you, once you got out there and started playing <clears throat> it became this huge uh, rush yeah i mean it, uh, they you know followed what I mean by that yeah like can he followed the incredible string band which was an english uh, almost acoustic band that didn't create any excitement for 400,000 people they got almost no reaction at all when they played yeah and uh At that time, we were. My my belief always was that the best time to play at a festival was when the sun was setting, so that you would get the sunset feeling and the daylight. But then the lights would come on in the middle of your show, and you'd get the atmosphere from the lights that the lights would create. But when they first went out to play the first song, and and the energy from their music and the way they were playing. Uh, to that many people and the people rose off the ground it was like i mean i remember just <laughs> thinking about it the hair is standing on my arm right now and i remember being off on the side of the stage and going holy shit basically this is phenomenal i i had a i had an adrenaline rush where it caused mucus to come out of my nose and out of my mouth so strong just from the rush of the being there with the, all those people yeah there's, there's never been that you know what feeling I'm saying? you know if you see before. it on film you i could show it better yeah my yeah. facial yeah but if you'd have seen it was like unbelievable i mean we played uh, the bath festival in england the same night with led zeppelin's first show and pink floyd and there were a couple of hundred thousand people there but the feeling wasn't the same it just was a, a total different It was a different thing. Also sie erzählen jetzt gerade, dass sie die ganze Zeit sind total begeistert, wie dieser Moment war, als sie hingekommen sind und äh, dass sie jetzt auch noch Gänsehaut haben, wenn sie daran denken, wie das äh, damals war und äh, dass dieses Gefühl einfach anders ist, auch zu allen anderen Festivals, die sie jemals überhaupt hatten und dass es einfach was ganz, ganz Besonderes ist. I just think I, I play one short song uh, from, from Alu Guthrie. Do you still remember this? No, it was on Friday. You, you weren't there. No, I, you came on Saturday. Yeah? Right, correct. Yes, yeah, Alan Guthrie. There for his show. Yeah, he, he was on, on uh, Friday, uh, but we're gonna listen to uh, this short song and then we begin. 